war was ended in Iraq. Yeah. You said Al Qaeda was decimated. Yeah. You said it was stable. It was. And, but just because something's stable uh, two years ago or four years ago doesn't mean that it's stable right now. I don't think there is a strategy. I mean, look, the idea of saying we're going to play whack-a-mole, whack-a-mole implies that a mole pops up and then it goes down and pops up somewhere else. And what we have now is actually moles popping up all over the place. And instead of taking any of them down, we're just watching this. We're debating Iraq. What happens now? Charles, with that discussion about Iran, it's made some very interesting bedfellows because there are folks who don't normally agree on these kinds of things that say uh, it's time for the U.S. to to partner in some pseudo alliance with Iran just for this particular issue and others who say it would be absolutely the worst mistake we can make. The others are right. The formers are completely We'll put you mistaken. down with the others. Yes, put me down as an other. Look, Iran has a very clear interest. It stated it directly to support the Shiite government as a Shiite dictatorship. That's why it backs Maliki. It is wrong about him winning the election. Essentially, he lost the election. He got 92 seats. The parliament is 330. Do the math. He isn't near to a majority. Yes, he won a plurality, but you have to have a coalition. And the Kurds and the Shiites and others could easily put together a coalition without him, including some of the Shiite moderates. That's the objective of the United States. We are here in competition with Iran. It is not, Kerry spoke about last week, working in concert. He said, if Iran has a united and uh, inclusive uh, Iraq as an objective, of course it doesn't. It, 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 it has a client Iraq as its objective. It wants Maliki in power. So the, the Maliki government is going to have to choose Iran or us. If Iran, they, they, they know what Iran will do. It'll do what it did for Syria, for Assad. We'll send in real troops, the Al-Quds. We'll give them real support. Tons of ammunition will be ruthless, and we'll stick around. Of course, it will then rule them, but it would, at least Maliki would survive as a puppet, perhaps. With the United States, they have to wonder, will Obama stick with anything? It's the better choice if you're an Iraqi. You bring back the Sunnis, whose allegiance is purchasable if they have a sense they're going to have a destiny in Iraq. And if you bring them into the government, they can and they will. The Kurds are willing to help the central government. The United States says, if you do this, we'll be with you. But the question is, will Obama be with anyone? He gives red lines that disappear. He leaves the scene. Often he's nowhere to be seen. And that's why we're at a cr critical point. Does anyone think they can rely on the United States under Obama? Well, if, if you, you have no reason to remember, but we came out of the White House not only dead broke, but in debt. Uh, we had no money when we got there, and we struggled to, you know, piece together the resources for mortgages, for houses, for Chelsea's education, you know, it was not easy. The fact is that Hillary Clinton has been living a life of luxury for 40 years, and she wants to be a champion of the middle class, and it's not that she can't be, it's that she's a hypocrite while doing it. All right, let's talk about it with our panel, and I want to kick off by also reading uh, an even more recent quote uh, in The Guardian from Hillary Clinton. This is dated June 21st over the weekend. Quote, they don't see me as part of the problem because we pay ordinary income tax, unlike a lot of people who are truly well off, not to name, name names, we've done it through dint of hard work. Um, first of all, I did have to look up dent, Charles, I'm not going to lie. Not very familiar with that word, but I now know it means hard work, that kind of thing. Uh, the Clintons say that they have worked hard, but again saying others who are truly well off, suggesting they aren't. It's the envy of the 1% for the 0.1%. Uh, you know, she goes by private airplane, but she doesn't own one. Uh, and there's a kind of re resentment people have who think they're as good as these rich people with whom they've been surrounded for decades, political supporters and others, uh, in whose places they have stayed, whose airplanes they have ridden, and have a sense of entitlement. But her problem is not wealth, it's sincerity. We have a long history of wealthy Americans whom people felt cared about the poor. FDR, perhaps because of his struggles, his uh, health struggles, polio, etc., although it wasn't that well known in the 30s. John Kennedy, he had a sense of noblesse oblige. The best example is Bobby Kennedy, who when he campaigned in Appalachia was seized with a true and sincere concern for the poor. Nobody doubts that he burned for uh, 
for that issue. Does anybody imagine that Hillary burns for anything, for the middle class, for gay rights or anything, uh, and anything of that sort? The, the, the Clintons have been motivated throughout their lives by the wish to rise and to acquire power. That's who they are, and that's why she's stumbling over herself on the wealth issue. But it stands for the larger issue. Who believes that she really feels it in her soul the way that you would have uh, felt it with a Bobby Kennedy or an FDR? ...is coming out because of the opponents within the party are putting it out and trying to shoot her down Make early. Make sure that we don't miss it. No. Dint and Sub Rosa on one show. That's <laughs> It's one for the books. Yeah, absolutely. For the dictionary. Thank you, panel. This is an educational experience. <laughs> Listen, every time you talk, Charles, trust me, it's an educational experience. This has been a Sunfish production.